drop this fuck is crazy I do it on the daily They treat me really nicely They buy me all these ices Don't you like the bottom Okay, so Botox in your 20s, is that insane? Is it insane? Okay, so we're gonna be talking about when to start using Botox, if to start using Botox, what is Botox? I mean, we're not gonna go crazy into this, but we wanna talk about, this is a common debate. At what age is it reasonable to start using Botox to prevent wrinkles? So we're gonna dive a little bit into that. Welcome back to our channel, Dr. Lee, where we talk about all things skincare and dermatology. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe. Here we go. Here here we go. Okay, so real quick, let's back it up a little bit. What the heck is Botox? So Botox, botulinum toxin, is a form of neuromodulator. So basically what it does is it inhibits the release of acetylcholine. Acetylcholine causes your muscles to contract. And so all that Botox and other neuromodulators do is keep you from contracting your muscles. And by paralyzing your muscles temporarily, they help to eliminate wrinkles. Now, there's more than just Botox. There's Dysport, there's Xeomin. So there are other types of neuromodulators out there that help. So Botox kind of became that common nomenclature. Like I'm Googling something, well, like Botox, I'm Botoxing, <laughs> getting Botox. It's the same sort of concept. Good branding, essentially. Yeah, good branding is if you're the first and you name something after yourself, that's great. There's actually a lot of misconception about Botox and fillers. I think people, especially if they're coming into cosmetic space, get these confused all the time. Like Dr. Shaw said, Botox freezes your muscles or weakens the muscles so that these dynamic wrinkles that eventually become static wrinkles, meaning they're there when your face isn't even moving, uh, don't become permanent, that those don't exist. Whereas filler just fills space. So those are two completely separate things. We're only talking about Botox here. So he mentioned dynamic wrinkles versus static wrinkles. So dynamic wrinkles is the wrinkles that you get when you move. So when you scrunch down your face or you smile, you have lines temporarily. Everybody gets this. Like with any facial movement, if you're a baby and you move your face, you're you're gonna get dynamic wrinkles. But when we get older, those wrinkles eventually get etched into the skin, they become static wrinkles. So the goal of Botox and all neuromodulators is to stop dynamic wrinkles and therefore stop the formation of static wrinkles. And so there's a term on social media that I hear all the time, preventative Botox. All Botox is preventative, that's the goal. It's not meant to reverse static lines, it's meant to prevent static lines. And so that terminology is kind of like, it's meaningless. So yeah, even off the bat, Dr. Shaw, actually, he used a word that kind of gave away the answer. He didn't say to treat your wrinkles. He said to prevent your wrinkles, even in the opening. And this is the biggest misconception of Botox. Not that it can't treat your wrinkles, because I think we see it anecdotally in the office all the oh, time. Yeah. People who have static wrinkles, they use Botox, and you do get some improvement over time with those resting lines on your skin with Botox. So if you've got the lines, it's not too late. You may benefit from Botox. But the bulk of the work is done in prevention. So the question is that at what age are you gonna start developing wrinkles? Well, we know that it depends actually on your skin tone. So with lighter skin tones, you end up developing wrinkles at a younger age. Now, sun damage plays a role. People that are very expressive and have strong musculature in the face tend to develop wrinkles earlier. Dr. Maxfield and I are basically the same age. Um, we basically have used neuromodulators about the same amount of times yeah. in our life. He just has a little bit more expressive, stronger, only facial muscles, not, not body muscles, I would argue, but his facial muscles are stronger than mine. And so he develops wrinkles a little bit quicker than I do. There's, there's so many different factors that play a role into this. Um, if you're like early 20s, right, you can do things to try to slow the process of wrinkles, right? That's your sunscreen. That's your retinol. Those are things that are going to be minimally invasive that are going to help with your wrinkles. But as you get into your late 20s, early 30s, mid 30s, you start to develop wrinkles just because of facial movement. I think you can think of this a couple different ways. It's the same concept of sunscreen, right? Your goal with sunscreen is largely preventative. You can have benefits if you use it after you have all the sun damage, but by far you're going to get the most bang for your buck if you start it ahead of time. And so the whole concept of using skincare proactively is not foreign to anybody. It's just this idea that people have that Botox is something different, something distinct. But truly, the idea of using it preventative in the same way you use your topical skincare actually makes a lot of sense and you're also going to get the biggest bang for your buck in that way uh, with this as well. It's actually probably the cheapest way to prevent wrinkles because 
all the other treatments we have for wrinkles are, are much more invasive actually than Botox. You know, filler to fill out the wrinkles once they form, laser resurfacing to basically collagen through damage to the skin or a facelift to tighten the skin or thread lifts, like all these other things that help to eliminate wrinkles are actually much more expensive than having done Botox and using your sunscreen and your retinol early on. So it's actually probably the least side effects with the lowest risk with the cheapest way to prevent wrinkles. This I would agree with. And, you know, I think we've talked about this in passing a lot in our videos is just like kind of like return for your investment, this whole mindset, because you can go out and buy it. I mean, you could buy a $1,000 cream from La Mer if you really wanted to, or you could buy units of Botox. And I, the way I explain this to patients and people in the real world is like, are you looking for a dramatic result? If you want to look in the mirror and be able to tell an appreciable difference within a day or within a couple of weeks, hands down, it's Botox every time. Like you're going to get what you're looking looking for fairly consistently from this procedure. And I think that's what makes it valuable for people. Yeah. So it works very well. Like I would say close to hundred percent of the time, but that's not true. There are people that develop antibodies or do not respond well to, to neuromodulators, but by and large, you will see results if you use a neuromodulator to prevent wrinkles. Costs being considered would be an effective and cheap way to treat wrinkles. Right. And so how do you know if this is the right option for you? Well, um, just full disclosure here that I heard it best explained by Prem. He's a plastic surgeon. And I love the way he described this, um, is that just really making sure you understand the difference between fine lines and wrinkles, which are just like those very, very shallow, fine, subtle lines that just make the skin look textured, look aged. That's completely different than dynamic wrinkles. And it's extremely important that you understand that because if you're going for these, you're not going to get a meaningful response from a topical cream. Same with probably like those deep acne scars. And we've said this many times as well, like make sure you know what you're treating. If you're going after thick dynamic lines, Botox is where you need to be investing your interest as opposed to an expensive topical cream. Absolutely. Knowing the limits of what your topical skincare products can do is super important. will end up actually saving you a lot of money at the end of the day. So one of the good things about Botox versus other cosmetic procedures is that it's not permanent. It only lasts about three months where it paralyzes those muscles for. Now the results where it actually softens those wrinkles will last much longer than the three months, but the movement is only stopped for three months. So if you hate it, if you're somebody who's like, I want to try Botox, but I'm nervous about it or I'm scared about it. And you, you end up getting frozen you hate the way it looks, it, it is going to wear off after three months. So for both of us, we don't like it when we lose the ability to show expression around the eyes. And so as a result, we just don't get injected along the eye. So you can pick and choose what look you want to go for, but just know that it's not permanent. That being said, if you want to be frozen your entire face all the time, you would have to get injected about every three months. So how much is this going to cost? So it's variable, right? And I think Dr. Shaw hit a key point that this is highly personalized. Like you can be frozen if you want. You can have subtle or softer movement if you want. And so the cost equates to how aggressive you want to be. Like if you want to be frozen, obviously it's going to take more, it's going to cost more. And it's broken down into by units. So it can be like 10 to $15 per unit, but this is probably going to vary depending on your location geographically, the city you're in, and also the type you're using. Cause we talked about the different brands. They all kind of hit within the same window though. Don't be tricked because because there's a unit conversion between Botox and then Dysport, which makes it even more confusing. Right, I would say just going in per treatment, what to expect depends on how many units. So let's say, you know, 40, 40 to 50 units for the upper face is gonna run you anywhere from, you know, on the low end, $400 to the high end, $100. And you can get discount, you know, neuromodulators that you see on Groupon or you see a sign for like six to $8 Botox. I would be like a little nervous of that. Um, yeah, it's probably but, the ones that are expiring like tomorrow. <laughs> or like just, so I mean, I have other, well, we can maybe talk about this later, but just be a little bit cautious about like anything discount when it comes to cosmetic procedures, just because oh, yeah. it is your face. There are side effects to things and you want to make sure that you're getting it done right. A neuromodulator is one of the things that's kind of lower risk, but if you're getting lasers done or fillers done, definitely do your research on who is injecting inside of your face. Yeah, absolutely. It, that's a good point, actually. It's not just the product. It's the person behind the product that's investing in you, the person on the other side of the product. So, <laughs> right. Yeah, this is something where you would want to invest in quality. Also, can I just say, do you have any tattoos? No, I don't either. I think I want, I want a three-month tattoo. If you could make tattoos like Botox 
tap me up. There's a new startup called like ephemeral tattoos and they, they, they do tattoos last about a year or two. I, maybe it's you who told me that. So if you see me and I'm like, I've got a sleeve on <laughs> next shoot, neck just know, yeah, neck tattoo, just know I found the place. Um, yeah. So, okay. So that being said, <laughs> so going back to the premise of the video, starting in your twenties, is that too soon? So I actually have like a little rule I came up with. You asked me like, when should I start? Or if I should start, when is a good time to start? So, so I tell people this, right? If, when you go to bed, I notice that my wrinkles are most pronounced right before bed. And I think it's because of my all day movement. I, t I tend to, when I wake up in the morning, I tend to be like more, more fluffy. But I eat a lot of <laughs> yeah. salt, you know? So, yeah. so, so I find that my wrinkles are most pronounced right before I go to bed. And so what I do to determine whether or not I'm developing these static wrinkles, which is what I don't want, is that I actually look at my face right before bed. And if I'm developing etched in lines, that's a good sign that my dynamic wrinkles are turning into static wrinkles. And that's when you want to be treated with Botox to prevent wrinkles. Look at yourself at night. If you're starting to notice that without facial movement, you're developing etched in lines before bed, that would be a good time to start preventing wrinkles. Now to the last question, because I know this is going to come up. Do, do we have to do this or are we just all crazy, insane, psychopathic people that are injecting poisons into our faces? And quite simply, no, you do not. You do not have to do any of these things. Aging is natural. The alternative is worse. And, and you know, we like to see, I mean, somebody who has lines is somebody who's lived and enjoyed life. So you absolutely don't need to do these things. We talk about them because we want to educate you about making good decisions and understanding how these things work. So that you can make an informed decision. And we're not trying to impose any of this on anyone else. Yeah, if you really want to know where we stand, just go back to our wrinkles video. We did a whole deep dive on wrinkles. We talked about our stance on wrinkles in the beginning of that. Get an idea of who we are and how we feel about it, but totally agree. Smile lines, you know you're stepping into a good room when the person you're talking to has lines etched on the side of their face. Right, so it's a part of life. We love it. So if you, if you want to have some wrinkles, embrace them, love them. Um, if you don't want to do these things, you don't have to do these things. The only thing I urge all of you to do is wear sunscreen to prevent skin cancer. But, you know, to fight every wrinkle, you know, it may not be worth it to you. So we'll do a video more on diving deep on neuromodulators and the safety because there are safety concerns with some of these. And we can go into some of the studies that talk about this overall a rel relatively safe cosmetic procedures. But of course, there's risk with everything. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in a future video. Actually, I'm willing to bet you're going to see a lot of procedural deep dives over the next year. I would put money on it. Uh, us. Absolutely. Because both he and I are, in soon. yeah, we're really, like really heavily investing in this on the side behind the scenes. So I'm excited to bring that forward to you. Right. And we'll do it in the same way we always do, which is to bring the science behind them so that you can understand what you're doing, what you're getting into, the benefits and risks of each, and then also be able to save you some money so you can pick the right cosmetic procedures. That being said, we love all of you. You're the best. If you have any questions, comments on this, leave them in the comments. How often do you get Botox or neuromodulators done? Um, infrequently. It's not a priority. So when the opportunity arises and I happen to be in the office, they're like, hey, Dr. Max, so do you want Botox? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> right. sure. I'm like every nine months or so. Um, it's probably been six months since I got mine, but every nine months. I don't even count. If you see me and my forehead moves less, I got it. If I, my forehead moves, I didn't. I literally pay no attention to my, this. I, I just don't. It's not a priority for me. There we go. All right. We'll see you all in the next video. All right. See you next time.